This is Alex Brichter, who's the illustrator of over 500 books for the Oxford Reading Tree Reading Scheme. And if you're under 30, you probably learn to read uh, with Biff and Chip and Kipper and Floppy. And uh, we'll probably know these books very well. But let's go and meet the man who did all the drawings in all those books. Well, here we are at the nerve centre of the Oxford Reading Tree illustration factory it's not really a factory is it because you you're not a sausage machine but sometimes i feel like one yeah <laughs> i've been churning these pictures out for nigh on 30 years now that's a long time and how yeah. many books have you do you think you've done well i i i stopped counting at about 300 <laughs> um it's probably 500 odd uh, at this stage told there'll be more <laughs> so so don't despair <laughs> i i had uh, a little boy ask me at the school yeah. uh, not long ago um how how come he saw me draw floppy he said how come you can draw floppy so fast and i said well because i've practiced a lot yeah. and he said what's practice and i said well practice is when you do something over and over many times and then you get to be hopefully good at it yeah. and uh, he said, well, how many times have you drawn floppy then? And I thought, well, I can, I can make a good estimate because yeah. uh, for every picture of floppy in a book, there are at least three. Because yeah. there's the initial thumbnail sketch, there's a full-size rough drawing, and then there's the illustration. And if I get it wrong, I'll do it again. Mm. And, um, and I've drawn floppy the dog in all the schools that I visited, every, you know, in every school several times. Yeah and all kinds of other materials that I've uh, illustrated, catalogues and, you know, animated films. And mm. I have drawn Floppy about 30,000 times. <laughs> so I, I, I said to this boy, if you do something 30,000 times, you will probably be fast at it. Yes. And you draw him from every single angle. So, I mean, that, that's another thing. People often ask me, how do you, it's one thing knowing this is, this is how you draw it, but how do you draw it from every different angle? Do you have this kind of 3D image in your head? Or? Yes, I do. I mean, it's, you know, with the Oxford Reading Tree, it's not just floppy, but uh, mm. I have, I have the, the whole house in my head uh, where everything is, you know, so I can sit down and draw Biff's bedroom. Yeah. You know exactly where everything is and what toys she are. I vary it, but mm. uh, but just as uh, the same thing with the characters. Yes, you you kind of if you keep drawing them, you you learn how they look from different angles. Yeah. Um, I probably couldn't make it in three dimensions. Mm. I think I tried once to make uh, uh, Kipper in three dimensions, but uh, and and his face is very simple, just yeah. an oval. But uh, I can draw it in from any angle. Yes. I know I've, I've, I've tried making three-dimensional models of my characters once or twice, and it's really difficult. But it's interesting because your father, around your house, you've got some 3D work that he does. So has the, have you always been 2D? Or I have you? always been 2D, yeah. yes. Yeah. yes. My, my father does like to create sort of uh, three-dimensional objects, but, yeah. but then his, his work is, is not exactly figurative. So... Yeah, you know, he will cut out right, shapes yeah. and colour yeah, them and yes. make an as assemblage of some sort. Yeah. But, um, so slightly different. Yes, and, and your mother's a painter too. And my mother's a painter, yeah. So you've been brought up um, in an artistic kind of environment. Not just that, but I have employed both of them to and work yeah. on my stuff. So. <laughs> in, in fact, we, we might see later, there's a little desk over there. Where, where your father actually comes in and helps you colour in the pictures sometimes. That's right, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Because you're doing so much work, and, and now there's two of you. Yes, yes, my best friend Nick, uh, Sean, who um, was at college with me and we became very close friends many, many years ago. Uh, he's, uh, he's illustrating books for the Reading Tree as well now mm -hmm. and, um, and can imitate me very well. If you're looking at recent Reading Tree books, it might be kind of interesting to see if you can tell the difference, do you think? Do you think anybody can? Um, I think some people can, yeah. but... Um, do you think maybe art, many, it needs an artistic... I think it know, needs somebody, an artistic, yeah. yeah, I, yeah think, I think children and teachers possibly will not, yeah. uh, or if they can, 
they don't mind yeah. as long as there's another book with floppy or kippers. Yes. So you were a child, we, we, was, we got a picture of you painting very, very young. <laughs> was that what you always wanted to be? Did you always have in mind an, an illustrator because your, your, your father was illustrating books? Was your mother illustrating books? She was, yeah. Your mother was both, both my parents. Yeah. I mean, they are, I think, first and foremost, painters. Yeah. So they paint paintings people buy and hang on their walls. Mm. Uh, but they have both done um, uh, book illustration yeah. in the past and um, and I knew I was surrounded by their artwork since birth yeah. and I knew um, that that was what I was going to do. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I, it never occurred to me that I could be anything else. Right. Uh, which was confirmed to me when I reached school age because I was rubbish at everything else about <laughs> drawing, so, uh, so I knew I couldn't do anything else. <laughs> or was it just that that's where you put all your energy? Do, do you think if you'd have worked a little harder you might have been a bit better at other things? Well, that's what the teachers told me. Yeah. You should work harder <laughs> and you, you will get it, but um, no, maths and physics, chemistry. Bah. You grew up uh, 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 from a very early age aware that there was this job of being the illustrator of books. Yes, definitely, because I saw my, my parents doing it. Yeah. Um, I have to say I wasn't necessarily expecting to be a, a book illustrator, yeah. but, you know, an artist of some sort. Mm. I was going to say I started as, a, as an advertising uh, cartoonist. Because right. that was, when I left college, the bulk of my work was doing cartoons for newspaper yeah. ads and things like that. But I actually illustrated my first book when I was 16, <gasps> when I was at school. Goodness. Still, so so I did actually become an illustrator first. Oh, and that was a but professional job, or that was a professional job. Yeah. Um, although, <laughs> as a sixteen-year-old schoolboy, <laughs> I couldn't really call myself a professional illustrator. And animation, in fact, mm. I, I I was working uh, for an animation company as an animator. Did you work on anything famous we might know of? Um, something called Sesame Street. Oh um, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was for an American animation studio. Yeah. And I got out of it because uh, I I didn't like the tedium of mm. drawing the same pictures over and over and yeah. over again. Yeah. And little did I know that I was going to end up drawing Biff, Chip and Kipper and Floppy for 30 years, yeah. at least. Uh, might go on a bit longer, hopefully. Yeah. Now, you went to the London College of Printing. Did you, do, did you learn a lot about printing techniques and things, or was it a very separate graphics course? Um, it was a separate graphics course, um, although printing was part of it. Um, so, so I learned, in fact, I remember uh, learning how to use uh, uh, lead type, mm. you know, the old way yeah. of setting yeah. uh, text. Yeah. Uh, we still did that yeah. uh, in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, I learned about um, silk, silk screen printing. Yeah. I learned about... Um, etching and stuff mm. like that so yeah. um, so it wasn't so much sort of the commercial although the college did cover commercial yes. printing you know offset and stuff like that yeah. um, um, but that wasn't why I was there I was there to to learn design yeah as in sort of posters book jackets right. uh, uh, record covers uh, that sort of stuff yeah did you see yourself then as a, as a graphic designer or, 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 or as an illustrator I saw myself primarily as a cartoonist mm. and, and illustrator because a lot of the uh, projects we were given which were clearly designed to be um, solved by what what is called hard edge design using typography and you know blocks of color or whatever I solved by making them into illustrations or even cartoon strips mm. uh, like comic strips yeah. um, so so I, there wasn't enough drawing uh, going on for my liking right. at, at the college at the time. Yeah. Um, and curiously, after I graduated, several years after that, uh, they called me up and they said, Alex, you, you, you are a drawer, aren't you? <laughs> they said, well, there isn't enough drawing going on at this college. And I said, yes, I remember that. Mm. And they said, well, would you like to come in as a mm. visiting lecturer uh, and, and teach some? And I did for about 10 years. Yeah. I went in on a one day a week basis. Oh, good. Yeah. And, and did you get them drawing or were they reluctant to draw? Um, unfortunately, it was difficult mm. because 
I wasn't on the panel of people uh, getting the students in. Yeah. So the students were mostly selected by hard edge designers and yeah. typographers. Yeah. So they were not kids who were terribly keen or skilled in drawing. Yeah. So um, there were some good drawers, and a couple of them, in fact, have become book illustrators. Yeah. But um, yeah, a lot of the time I was frustrated because um, they were not. It was that that wasn't what they came to the college for. And yeah. uh, it's, it's funny because I went on. Uh, we, it was called vocational graphics. Was my year, and it was it was a muddle of things really, and um, and we had a lot of illustrators came like you one day a week or so. And I could see, uh, looking back, I could see how frustrated they must have been with us because we didn't, we didn't draw as much as we should have done, yeah, and, and, yeah. and they couldn't inspire us. And in my last year, we had, um, we had a, a teacher came called Chris Cor, who just opened my eyes to that drawing doesn't have to be a photograph, basically. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and it's just, and he kind of set me free drawing. I think. Mm. And mm. Um, but but for the rest of the time, it's. Like, it's a bit of a fight, I think, and I can, I can mm. imagine you. I can understand you could have been frustrated. The other thing about you having been to the London College of Printing is I noticed this studio is stuffed full of technology. Unlike most illustrators, you have a huge sort of high end scanner, whereas a lot of people nowadays will maybe sending their work digitally or. Or like me, then I send my work in on paper and it get, probably goes off to Hong Kong or something to get scanned. But you kind of do all that in-house. And so is, is that a legacy of, of your kind of printing days, do you think, and an interest in... No, in, not in at the, all. No. Not at all. It, it's <clears throat> simply uh, a time-saving uh, mm. device. Uh, in the old days, before I started doing my own repro, uh, all my illustrations were sent to Oxford mm. uh, in an envelope. Yeah. And then uh, they were sent on to Hong Kong yeah. to be scanned. Yeah. And then eventually the files would come in probably on CDs at the time. Or, mm. And then I was given the files back many weeks later sometimes mm. so that I could open them up in Photoshop and do some little corrections or tweaks. And, uh, and I got frustrated with that. And I said, I'll do it all myself so mm. I can... I can do it all here and do it immediately and I can scan my pictures and work on them the same day in Photoshop as yeah. I've finished uh, them in with watercolors and pens. Yeah. Um, the disadvantage is that um, in the old days I would send my pictures off and I was free all evening. Mm. Uh, nowadays I will sit here until two or three in the morning yeah. most nights and because uh, I know I can just upload the pictures once they're finished. Yeah. At any time during the day or night. Yeah. I think we used to have a lot more spare time in the old days, didn't we? It's, yes. We have to do twice as much now as we used to. I find. Yes. The technology <laughs> you would think would save yes. us time. Um, yes. It doesn't seem to. I remember in the 1980s they kept talking about the uh, the leisure society. Yeah. How we were going to have so much more time to fill. Yeah. That were going to be three day weekends. Yeah. And, uh, that's right. It hasn't happened. No. Well, not in this business anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I work. I work in here every weekend. So. Yes. I, I, yeah. So, w w would you say you're a work seven days a week? Uh, Sometimes. Yeah, most of the time. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, the advantage of being your own boss is that, you know, if if mm. my son says has a free day on a Wednesday, yeah. and says, uh, "Dad, let's go play golf." Yeah. Uh, unless I'm working towards a, a an urgent deadline. Yeah. I'll say yeah go on let's let's go and play golf yeah um, but you've got you know in your mind but but then you've got to then i've got to make up the time sunday night yes. <laughs> that's right <laughs> so yeah um um, um let me coffee think. break coffee break I tell you what, I first came across your work about 27 years ago now when I went to, uh, as a very green illustrator with my folder full of work, I went to the Oxford University Press offices mm. and, and, and I showed them some things I'd done and they said, this would just fit in with something we're just about to start. And they showed me these books called The Oxford Reading Tree and, 
and they said we can fit these in sort of on the side as part of this new reading scheme and they said don't tell anybody it's very very secret top secret and uh, it was about six months I think before I think before it was launched and and I was staggered at the time at the amount of work that you'd done when they showed me the number of books and I felt exhausted just looking at them how much work you've done because I think you build up stamina don't you over the years to be able to do that that much work yeah well you know as a freelance illustrator um you you don't think about it you're just glad the work's coming in and uh, the disadvantage of um, being a freelance illustrator if you're successful is that i think all freelancers have an inbuilt instinct not to turn work down yeah. when it's offered absolutely and uh, in my case i've um, i don't recall ever saying to oxford i can't take i can't take an extra book on i can't fit it in i'd yeah. always say yes sir. and even if there's you know the publicity department uh, or the export department, because uh, the books are now sold to 136 countries around the world, yeah. in, and also in, I think, nine translations. So, so there's a lot of publicity going on as well, yeah. you know, outside the, the book uh, uh, yeah. area. And, uh, of course, I illustrate some of that uh, too, mm. and so um, I never turn any of that down. No. And, of course, every time I take on another catalogue illustration or... A, poster or something um, it sets me back a little bit with the book yeah. illustrations but um, yeah. you know I never think about it I just say yes of course yes yeah. uh, I'll do it and glad of the work yeah. and uh, carry on and uh, right I add another two hours of work tonight uh, <laughs> at three in the morning uh, yeah so so basically the, the Oxford reading tree has has been the bulk of your work for, for 30 years or something and you haven't really done any other books or? I I have, you but have, it but... Did, it didn't work out yeah. because um, I didn't read my contracts oh. very well, <laughs> uh, and I'm not allowed to work oh. on uh, certainly on competing oh, right. uh, publications. Yeah. Yeah. So, so once I did take on a job for a competing publisher on their own reading <laughs> scheme, and uh, it didn't go down well no. with Oxford. And I can understand yeah. why, so yeah. so I haven't done it since. <laughs> <laughs> and have you got any idea how many books have been sold with your work in them? Do you know what? I? It would be fun to know, yeah. but nobody knows. Nobody knows because um, it, it must run into millions and millions. Yeah. But there's five, 500 books you've done. There's 500 books. Uh, they have been printing these books for nearly 30 years. Yeah. Um, a lot of them have been reprinted again, uh, and, again, again and again. again. Um, a lot of them have been updated. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole raft of books that I have actually re-illustrated. Yeah. Because the early versions looked suddenly, well, after years, looked yes. different. Yes. Because the characters and the style of illustration... Yeah evolves yeah and, um, al and also you might yeah. wonder and the computers get up date the and the the stuff the in the pictures yeah. looks dated that's right you know yeah, in the early books yeah. i had tv sets which were wooden yes. boxes with buttons on yes. them yes um so so there was another reason for yeah. re-illustrating some of the early stuff yeah. because because the the technology in those illustrations dated those yeah. books so when you consider all that and the fact that you know the books are, are being actually you know a korea has its own edition and yeah god knows how many uh, uh books they have printed over the last 15 years or however long they've yeah. been doing it so when you add, would add it all up, I'm sure it would run into many, many millions. But I wonder if you're even getting towards the billion. I don't <laughs> probably not that far off. I think that would be some sort of record. It that... probably would be. I mean, you must be up there in, in the publishing record somewhere, I would have thought. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. But, yeah, um, yeah it's, uh, th it's been too many books for anybody to, yeah. to be able to count or recall. Or... I, I find educational books tend to be... People don't take notice of them. Have you have you ever won any awards? I have yeah. won. Uh, I have won a very prestigious yeah. um, educational resources awards uh, uh -huh. award, 
um, both Rod and I, Rod Hunt, the author, and yeah. I. And um, of course, the most uh, prestigious for me is that uh, last year I was awarded an MBE. Oh wow! I didn't know that. So um, uh, yeah. so yes, I've got a I've got a medal I can wear. You, see, you can tell what a bad interview I am. <laughs> I haven't done my research. <laughs> <laughs> if I was at the BBC, yeah, I'd know all this. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was terribly worried, because I, I, I know how sort of educational books tend to get overlooked, don't they? And, well... And, you know, and these artistic kind of picture books get lots of awards and things like that. That's mm. true, that's true. Yeah. yeah, there are all kinds of uh, uh, awards and medals that mm. um, illustrators and yeah. authors win for children's literature. Yes. And you're right that, um, mm. you know, it's educational books... However popular it may be with yeah. children, yeah. doesn't quite fall into children's literature no, category, does it? Well, I was terribly worried in case you hadn't won an award, so I've done one for you. It's the Illustration Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> oh, wonderful. It's the Ginger Ninja Awards. I've some, I, I decided this morning I think I should start doing Ginger Ninja Drawing Awards. Well, sure. You're the very first winner of a Ginger Ninja Thank you very award. much, and what an honour. And it, it, it'll, go, it'll go right next to my uh, MBE and oh, my uh, <laughs> Educational Resources yeah, Award. Well, that's wonderful. So Thank you good. so much. Well, Super. I, I think we've covered an awful lot, and, and I'd just like to say thank you very much for telling us all these things about being an illustrator and your life. Well, Stuff. shoot, thank you for coming to my studio and, uh, and asking me all these questions. It's That's been fun. Great, thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Click for another video as Alex shows us how he draws Kipper and Floppy the dog and shares some of his studio techniques with us. Do make sure you're subscribed for the Wednesday Drawing Show every week. And in the meantime, keep drawing, drawing, drawing. <laughs> practice, practice, practice. And I'll see you next time. You take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>